Greetings, travelers. So today we're going to start the first in a multi-part series where I'm going to try and break down each section of custom main menu, which is made by Lumion and is available on CurseForge. And I will make sure to put the link to the mod in the description. But we are going to basically, well, I'm going to try and basically teach you the basics of custom main menu. I won't go into too much advanced stuff. That's going to be something that you'll have to figure out, but at least I'll get you the basics so you can start using a menu and getting one designed. Uh, for this example, we are going to use one that I've already created for one of my mod packs, but let's go ahead and get started. So when you first load Minecraft after adding the mod, you'll notice that pretty much the menu is the same. Uh, the only notable difference is going to be the refresh button, but otherwise the config that's generated pretty much recreates the Minecraft screen as it is normally. So today we're going to start with the different sections. So I'll show you here. This is the file that gets generated. And if you open it up, I suggest using something like Notepad++ or Contact, something that you can use that keeps the structure proper but you'll notice that there are several sections uh, there's images which basically deal with the background and, and the header image and that kind of stuff and we'll get it that's the first section we're going to go over and we'll get more detail in a moment there's the buttons which is going to be your single player multiplayer mods all these buttons here uh, as you scroll down you'll have language or not language uh, text that's going to be things that you see here like this part here this bit over here and then other that's going to be that's going to be the true background of the menu uh, with the default that's a panorama of just regular minecraft world gen and splash text there's a couple other things that can go in that other, but those are the primary ones that will show up. So, first one we're going to do is we're going to do images. The next video will go over some buttons. After that, we will deal with text, and then of course the other. Um, Depending on how the series goes, we will then get into a little bit more stuff. Um, I do tip already have a tutorial out there for custom menus, custom GUIs, but we will revisit that in a later video after we've built the rest of this menu. So let me go get one more file open and I will be right back. All right, welcome back. So to start with, like I said, we're going to do the images first. So the first thing we'll look at is the menu. Now I will suggest uh, starting out with basic, basic images until you get more comfortable with it. But some key points to remember is the image path as it's written here. That refers to, in this case, the actual jar file. Uh, when you use the resource, and you will want to use resource loader, which is another mod by Lumion that goes along, that works very well and was intended to go with custom main menus so that you can have your own specific resources for making menus and a bunch of other things, which in a later tutorial we'll probably cover some of the other things that you can do with resource loader. Uh, the positions here, X and Y, refer to the positioning from the top left corner of the image. So at zero, 00 being if you know in this case the alignment we have top center which would be right here uh, that's been moved over and down in order to get the image where it's at now. And then image width, image height refers to how big this image shows up. Now another key factor if you have say a very large image but you want to have the width and height smaller than what the image is, you're going to want to note the image height and image width in order to make it work properly. So the first thing we're going to do, and for the most part we're just going to copy what I already have in here in order to 
translate it over rather than retype it. So in this case, this is the one for Tolkiencraft. And here is the two images. Well, actually, I have three images for the main title. Now, I've already copied all the textures over from my other menu. So, but you'll see here how I have textures, goes into Tolkiencraft, and then there's buttons, documents, GUI. Uh, for other things, I have this. This was actually for uh, trying to loading screen. Loading screens are not supported, but it's there in case that actually ever does happen. And then I have Minecraft because you can actually replace sounds in this, which is something we will get into. Uh, that's going to be part of the extended resource loader information that I'll give you later. But for the most part, we're going to be focused on the textures, token craft. So with that said, uh, the first thing we do, we'll just go ahead and copy everything from this side of the brace down to the bottom brace. And then we will replace it here. Now, this is where I was showing you. Now, in this case, the image and the, the height and width are the same as the width and height I've used in game. But in the case of, again, if this was a bigger image, you want to put that in there to make sure that it doesn't do some kind of odd thing. Sometimes it'll just cut the image off. Uh, but I've done this to make sure that I get the exact what I'm looking for. Now, the, these, for images, don't have any specific use other than to identify each section individually. That's why you see it's very unoriginal. I just did title, title 2, title 3. Uh, the image names are the same thing. You know, you name them how you want to use them. But again, we'll go look at the image path, and you see that you have textures, which refers to the first folder and then after that it goes Tolkiencraft GUI and then it shows the name and then the same thing here with the additional images now the other major thing to keep in mind is the layers are based on the first one is the furthest back so you'll have that as the bottom layer this is the one that goes on top of that layer this goes on top of that layer so when you're putting your images in your background, make sure if you want them in a specific position or area or to show up in a certain way, keep in mind that layering effect so that, you know, if I put the main background last, that's going to cover everything over. So ideally, your biggest part of your background, put that as the very first one, and then everything else goes on top of that. So if we save this, and go back and then hit refresh in this case we'll use a button later on we'll show you about getting rid of that you'll see the change now to show you the reference this background is this image right here looks like the map of middle earth this image the logo is the ring image that's in the back notice how this is the very back that's on top of this and then the top, the last one, which I've just simply named Minecraft 2, is the actual image that goes to the very top. So that way everything gives you that nice layering effect, shows how everything is. That's how you keep them in order. And then, of course, if you look, this one is top left, because what I've done is reference this top corner here, and then I've shifted it over so that it looks somewhat centered. And then the same thing with the second image, which is the ring. I've done that to make it go centered behind everything. And then finally, the actual title, top center, with the positioning. Now, those positions are relative. So you see I'm in the standard default size. But if I expand, it pretty much stays the same, except, you know, things do shift over. But the idea is play around with the alignments and the coordinates, basically, for the images, so that that way you get everything from the default size up to, as you can see, this big screen, so that everything still looks decent and not distorted when you expand. 
And the only thing I can offer to describe how to do that is literally just play around. I build my menus within the small screen and then occasionally we'll expand it to see how it looks and then adjust it accordingly. But theoretically, if you set the coordinates right when it's in this screen, when you expand it, everything stays relative and it doesn't look that bad. Uh, so again, if you look, I have top left for this one, which starts here, and I want it to stay there because I want it to stay on the left-hand side of the screen. And then, of course, I have the coordinates of where I want them to be. In this case, zero, because I want it to stay in the very top corner. And then if I've moved it down about 20 pixels so that everything shows up like I want it to here. Because if I did zero, zero, Part of this image actually gets to, because this bar up here is taken into consideration from what I've seen. And you can see there's still a little bit up there. But by moving it down, now everything, most everything is on the screen. So that's it for, for the image section. The next tutorial that we'll do, we'll, we'll start getting into the buttons and how to change those around. As well as some of the, the functions and we'll even cover some of the actions that you can do. So until then, thank you for coming by and have a great day.